Hello, welcome everyone. This is part three of my color along out of Thomas Kincaid's uh, Dreams Collection. This page is also in the Disney Princess if you have this version. Um, the only difference is, is this one's a little more zoomed in. There's a castle and some flowers in the bottom. But um, Also, there's a sale on Amazon right now. Buy one, get one half off. And these books are on there. So you can get both books for like $9 if you're interested. I'm not sure how long that sale will go for though. Okay, so this video I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on all this green and I'm going to go ahead and put in some flowers. I am going to come back to these guys, but I think I can get this pretty much wrapped up in a part four if I get my green in tonight. So that's what I'm going to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it in. I do have about every green pulled here. So I'll let you know what I decide to use as I go. Okay, so again, um, I am not exactly copying this side. I am using it for reference as to what what things are, like this little path here is kind of hard to decipher on this side, but my colors, as you can tell, are much brighter, more vibrant. I'm not going for this painted look, I'm going for my own little style. So we'll get centered there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this green right here. I'm going to pull a lighter green, so I'm going to start with I don't want a pale green. Um, this is spring green and I'm going to do the stems in the grass that are standing up. No, I'm not going to color all the way in. I'm not going to blend it. I'm not going to burnish it. I am just coloring it green for the moment. So I'm going to put some detail in these here. Now I'm just kind of marking out colors and finding where everything is. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to be very sad if my children got me sick. I've done so good. <laughs> okay. So just kind of placing this where I want it here. Now these flowers I will probably color with a pencil, whereas these little dots of flowers over here on the top I'm going to put in with chalk markers. You can also use acrylic paint or gel pen, whatever you have, or you can put them in with pencil even. Is water there but there's a piece of grass that goes across that's what I was trying to see okay, so we're just coloring the grass stems with our spring green now again they have a lot of a lot more stems on the side and they have in between them a very dark green to even almost black looking to where over here our flowers are a little more bare looking so um, I'm not gonna go with black because I feel like that would look really harsh but we will try to fill it in a little more here and see if we can get a more grassy look color the tops of these here. And these little flowers I will probably put in with chalk marker, so I'm not worried if I color over them because my chalk marker will cover it. Okay, then we're going to take the grass green. And these spaces are little, so it is a little tricky. But we're just going to kind of highlight some sections of our grass in darker colors here. I'm not really doing a rhyme or reason because it's going to be hard to tell when people are looking at it. If they tell where the shadows and highlights are. I just want to make sure I have some different colors going in here. Go 
going right over the top of this black line so that it creates a shadow like these are standing taller. Coloring the bottom of this darker, and I will probably even darken that up one more shade. But I kind of want to start getting those shadows in. So this is Prussian Green. And this is kind of our in-between color, so we're coloring all the spaces in between. If you're not sure of an area, skip it for now, and um, as you kind of get things in, it should come to you what it is. Again, going to darken the bottom here, kind of blend everything out. And this is Lime Peel. blender color Get back to brushing because I want to make sure like this grass blade right here I put a shadow under it so it pops out between these ones here it does take a little bit of time to kind of get in between everything is worth it once we get everything in and blended. It will look a little choppy at first, but just darkening that shadow a little so that my dark color carries through. Darkening some random areas. Again, between the flowers over here. So if you are new, we have an edge where it stops and you can kind of see where my edge is very wild. Um, I'm usually washi tape my border or at least black it out and make it look framed so I'm not too worried about the edges being perfect. That is your call if you're following along or doing your own page similar. I'm really tempted to do one out of the big book, but I know it'd be like 500 parts long. <laughs> Still think it would be fun to tackle. Alright, so I'm going to switch back colors here now. flower. Get back in with that lime peel. This is just again blending all our greens together so they don't look choppy. Anywhere we got some white, we're going to go ahead and fill it in.
And then I'm going to pull a dark green. Just give me one second to find my dark green. Okay, dark green. And then there's just a couple spots that I want a little darker that I feel like need to stand out a little more and didn't quite get there with the Prussian green. So I'm just going to layer right over the top of everything with that dark green. And that just kind of helps bring everything out a little more. Take my chartreuse and kind of put these stems over here in. these but I want a little brighter yes, that looks better to me okay, and then I'm going to pull poppy red and Spanish orange now it's up to you whether you want to follow this color or just kind of randomly place your colors they're not a huge area to work with, but these red ones, I'm going to pull scarlet red. And I'm going to color the center and the line down. I'm going to try to keep all my flowers that are the same in one color here. So then we got that beautiful red next to that blue. Hope everyone had a great Valentine's Day if you celebrate, or regular Tuesday if you didn't. We got another few inches of snow, so we didn't venture out really to celebrate or anything, but... Okay, so there is our red flowers. And then I'm going to pull my canary yellow if I can quickly grab it without making too much noise. Pardon the sharp noise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the center of these ones darker. I need to erase the green out of that one. I kind of want to keep them clean. See, I forgot a couple of red ones over here, but um, I want to get some up here done too, so I will come back and get those when I'm off. Just want to show you a couple yellow ones real quick. Okay, and then we're going to take that canary yellow, almost colored a red one. If you don't feel like your one orange is dark enough, which I think. I'm going to add just a dot darker to a couple of them. Not necessarily all, but just make those centers a little more standout-ish. That's just regular old orange. Take my dark green while I see this spot I skipped. So 
put my yellow in first and then I'm going to put a little orange on it just so it blends a little easier. I don't want to try to drag a bunch of green into it. You don't have to be right in the center as you can tell it doesn't really matter it just gives the flower some color which is what we're going for. Um, not sure what this one is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be a red one, so I'm going to leave it for now. I need these two put in. If we need to, at the end, we can come back and add a little more color to those. So I am going to do this one red. I think it's a rose. If it's not, it is now. Um, they don't have it really in the painted side to know if it's supposed to be like a bird or a flower or what. So we're going to go with red. Okay, let me pull my chalk markers. So these are the ones I have. Um, I have the boxes, but they are in the cubby holes of my desk with tons of stuff on top of them. So I have one that's a Chocola chalk marker. I really like these ones. And I have Wee's Brandt Ultra Color Premium Chalk Marker. They both work great. Um, my suggestion is to you is anytime you are starting these or checking them, do not do so on your project paper. Always use a spare piece because if they flood, it will ruin your page. Um, I just picked some random colors here, so I'm just gonna quickly test them, make sure everything is started. So here is my red, and my tip looks huge on here, it does, I know. But as long as you lightly dab, you will get little flowers. Okay, so then I'm gonna quickly check my yellow. And I'm going to add some yellow over here so it looks like the same flowers we have up here are growing over here. Okay. And I am going to do quite a few because I want them to look bunched. But I'm switching back and forth so they look randomly placed and I don't have one more than the other. This one, my, I'm going to let that dry for a sec before I add a little more yellow so I don't smear. I quickly need to fix my green over here. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a sec and I'll add a couple more yellows. I like that. So there is one little island, and again, you can adjust as necessary or whatever you need. I might play with it a little more just to get my shadows in here off camera, but basically I like it. And now we're going to play up here. Um, so basically same thing, not going to do anything um, different. I'm going to use the same greens. So I'm going to start with these vines here in the corner. See if we can get these done. So first thing I'm going to take is my Prussian green or dark green, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to go around the leaves that are poking out in the middle. And that just gives a little shadow look to them. And it colored that one a little bit. I'm trying not to touch my chalk marker just yet because it's not dry. Clean 
the bottom of this one up. We got a little water color on it in here. Okay. And I'm gonna just add a little color to the bottom of these so they don't look like the dark just stops. So around these middle ones, got that little one again. Then I'm gonna take grass green. And I'm going to go over the top and pull out a little. Notice I'm still leaving some white. As we work in the rule of three, three colors most of the time. We didn't on the flowers because they're tiny, but I think they're still effective. Again, this side is very dark and has a lot of black in it. I am not going to add black to mine. Okay. And then we're going to pull that chartreuse, which is our bright, bright yellow, yellow, green. I can keep my color straight here. So we're just kind of blending those colors out to the side here. They look a little brighter on the edges and a little more bunched up in the middle. Those leaves are nice and bright. Colored this one. Same on this last one here. We're just kind of blending it all together. And there are our vines. So we have a whole section of flowers right here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this little section, how I do it. Because um, that'll be basically the same throughout all of this. So I'm going to sharpen my dark green super sharp. First things first, I'm going to put these little stems in down here. Now I'm going to use more than one color, so I'm not doing them all. But I do want them to be a little darker toward the water. Even on these little details, we still want to kind of keep the same... Uh, highlight effects. Okay, then I'm going to take that lime peel and fill in wherever the dark green didn't. These two work great together for small areas because they have a nice contrast, but they still kind of go together. So you can tell that there's dark and light, but you can't kind of tell where one starts and one ends. Okay, this is where I said it's up to you whether you want to use the chalk markers or the gel pens or whatever you use. I am going to go ahead and just dot mine. to actually pull a pink. That one is really bright. Let's not go fluorescent pink on flowers. Okay. And again, let one dry if you're going to dot over the top of it. 
if your chalk marker is running out, not as bright as you want, never press down to try to get more in the tip on your project paper because it will flow everywhere and you will have a giant colored smear running. There's our little chalk marker flowers. So they, um, you don't get, you know, you're not doing all the tiny detail, but I think they're still effective. Okay, so same thing over here. Mm, that is not my dark green. So there's this little patch here we're going to do dark green. Did not get as far in this half hour video as I thought I was going to. Okay, notice I'm just doing sharp up motions for the grass. Sorry, that spot was bugging me. Okay, so when I get up here... We'll put a shadow behind that line, a shadow behind that line. And I am going very slow. Because I don't want to have to try to erase this dark green off my paper if I mess up somewhere. Okay, I'm going to put a little grass green right above that dark green and I will come back and darken these colors. Again, just kind of filling out the landscape here. What is what? Now they do have a little path goes right here, which is different on mine than theirs, but we'll make it work as long as we are aware it is there. Then I'm going to take that to Lion Peel again. Remember it goes over the dark green on those spots we put in. Now again, it depends on how you do your flowers, how you want to do this part. I'm doing chalk markers, so it doesn't matter if I get it on my little flowers. Um, my chalk marker will not soak up the color of these little flowers that I'm going to put on. Or the green under the flowers, anyway. So we can work right over them. Then I'm going to add just a tiny dot of this chartreuse. So we have a little highlight color going. Now that I got that on there, I can see I clearly missed some grass, so I'm going to put that in. Now the thing about the chalk marker, because I put mine in early, usually I wouldn't do it till the end, is if you hit it with your pencil, you will scrape it right off, which can be good and bad, but just a heads up that way. Okay, I'm going to fix a little bit of my grass here that doesn't look so grassy. Darken up a couple patches here. Okay. And then 
I'm going to go ahead and color so that there's no white showing between my flowers if my chalk marker doesn't cover at all. This little section I'm going to do darker like it's a divot in the grass here. Still trying to keep some depth and dimension going here. Okay, and then we will do the same. Just come back in with whatever color you want your little flowers to be. So questions, comments, please let me know. Um, I bought these chalk markers forever ago, so I'm not sure if they're still on Amazon, but if you would like a link, let me know. I will look them up and get them to you. But I think any chalk marker will do if you are interested in them. All right, so there is our whole page so far. We're getting closer. I've done a lot of work on here. I hope to see you for the next part. Thanks for watching.